Okay, for step number four, we are going to be starting to get our pieces assembled together. And there's lots and lots of ways we can connect boards together uh, with different joints, but we're going to be connecting our side, short sides to the legs as well as the long sides to the legs. And we're going to be using what's called a biscuit joint for this. And the first thing on your paper it says is to get your two long sides and your two short sides. These should probably be on your storage shelf, so you can go grab those boards. Your name should be on them. And it says mark an X on the best looking face. So we're looking at the face of the board here. Uh, whichever face we feel like looks the best. You might have some knots, you might have some defects, scuff marks, whatever reason. Just kind of judge both faces of that board and see which one you think is the best looking because we're going to mark an X on that saying that that's the side I want people to see when we put our project together. So just make a quick judgment on each one here and a lot of these are probably pretty good on both faces but make a judgment of which one you think is the best looking for each of your boards. You're going to do this on the short sides and the long sides. Okay, I've got couple knots here, one little knot there, and maybe you really like the knots. You want to emphasize that and have people see those or other things on your board. And so, I don't know, maybe I do like those. I'm going to put an X on that face. Same thing on this one. Take a look at both faces. Okay, we've got a little bit of a defect going on on the side of the board. Maybe we want to hide that, so I'm going to put an X on that face. I'm just So just make a judgment call on what is the best looking face on each of your boards. Okay, now you have a, an option to do a routed design on the edge of your boards before you assemble these together as well. On your table and your sides, now this one just shows the sides just being flat on our edges here and no design at all, but you have an option if you want. We can put a little routed design in here. And again, this is optional, it's just if you want, we can just kind of fancy up the edges of these boards here. So you would do this to your long sides and short sides, so like right there, it's just, just flat. But if we wanted to, we could add that little routed design into the edge here. If you'd like to do that, we're going to use our router table. And it is this blue one right here. And if all my routers have numbers on them. This one happens to be number five. And so they're all labeled. So it says use the router table number five for this design. So I've gone ahead and decided that yes, I do want to do that routed edge to mine. And you're going to make sure when you run your boards here, your face with the X needs to be face down. And you also want to make sure that we're running this on that longer edge. So your shorter edge is the top of your table. We want this on the bottom part. So we're going to have that X face down and the longer edge go against our fence of the router. And you'll notice there's arrows telling us which direction to push our board. That's important that we make sure we go the opposite way that the bit is spinning. So those arrows are telling us push our board this direction when we go through. To turn this on, underneath the router here, the switch is actually this little red button right here underneath. And so you'll turn that on and then we'll go ahead and run our boards across and it'll route that little fancy design into the edge of our board. see that it has just gone through and put a little routed groove into the edge there. Now it still has a little sharp corner here, which is fine to leave, but it's just got a little fancy design on here. If you'd like, I have another router that we can round over that little corner with as well. That's number four router, and so um, I'm going to go ahead and do that also, but let me go ahead and get the rest of these ran on this router first, and then we'll show you the other router that's, again, it's an optional design that you can run as well on here. So we're going to make sure we have our X's down each time, and that longer edge is the one that goes against the fence when we run this. Also, keep pressure down on your board. If you're running this across and your board lifts up a little bit, it's not going to have that groove be consistent all the way through, so keep some tight pressure down as you're running that across. OK, 
Okay, so this one labeled number four has a small round over bit in it. And again, on your board, it just put a little groove in the middle, but that corner is still pretty square. One nice thing on this one, if you want to do this, again, completely optional, you can round over that last little edge there so it's not a sharp corner. The on switch on this router is underneath and it's actually on the router itself right here, so you'll turn that on. Again, there's arrows telling you which direction to push your board. So we want to make sure we're going the opposite way that the bit is spinning, which we want to push our board this direction. And I'm going to go ahead and run that exact same edge, keeping my X face down, that same long edge against the fence when we run these across that bit. And it'll just do a slight round over edge as well. there we can see that this one added a little bit of a rounded edge to that very bottom. So again, this is just an optional thing. If you want to fancy up your boards a little bit, you're welcome to do this. If you'd rather just leave your boards flat and not do this router design, that's totally fine. Okay, next we're going to, it says mark a center line on both ends of each of your long and short sides. And there's a picture that kind of shows what we're talking about here. We just need to mark a line in the center of this board where we're going to be cutting a little biscuit slot. Now if you want to be precise, exact, you know, you can take your tape measure and find the very center of this and put a little mark right in the middle. You can just eyeball it if you want, um, but again we want to just try to get that close to the center. Once you've done one, again you can just match them together and transfer your center lines over to your other pieces here. But we just want to get a little center line mark near the very middle on both ends of all your long and your short pieces. So just right in the middle, just transfer it over. Just a small little center line mark near the middle. One more here. Again, you can eyeball this, you can measure it out, but just get it marked near the center somewhere. Then it says use the biscuit joiner to cut a slot into each of your, the end of each of your long and short sides and lining up the center line of the biscuit joiner with the center line on the ends of your boards that you marked. This is a biscuit joiner and we've got a picture on your paper what it looks like as well. Just a little hand tool that we use to cut some slots into your board. Again, this is just one method that we can use to connect boards together with. There's multiple ways to connect boards together, but this biscuit joiner is pretty quick, it's pretty easy. Um, you plug it in, and there's a little trigger here on the back. When you pull that trigger, it'll turn on. Let go, it'll turn off, and you'll press it forward, and there's a little blade that will pop out of that, and that'll cut a little slot into your board. And we do want to clamp your board down so it doesn't move, so we'll get some clamps and we'll clamp it down to the bench. And again, your biscuit joiner has a little center line slot that you're going to line up with the little line that we drew on our board here when we go to make this cut. So we'll go ahead and get this clamp down to the edge of a bench so it doesn't move. We'll make our biscuit slots cuts. You can use any clamp you want to clamp your board down. I'm going to go ahead and use this wooden hand screw clamp. And we just want that thing clamped real firm so your board doesn't move at all. And again, on our biscuit joiner, we're just going to line up the very center line of our biscuit joiner with the little marks that we drew on our boards. We want to make sure your biscuit joiner sits nice and flat on the table. If there's any sawdust or other things on here, we've got to clear it out of the way. We also want to make sure that when we make this cut, that it stays nice and firm, that we don't move this to the side or tip it as we're making this cut. So we just put one hand up on the handle, the other hand's on the trigger. Lining up that center line, I want to pull the trigger first and then plunge it forward and it will stop where it needs to. So we're going to turn that on, plunge it forward, and it will actually spring back. So as I plunged it forward and then it springs back when you're all done. If you notice, it has just cut a little slot in our board there. 
for us to connect it together with our legs. We want to get both sides. So where the other line is at, we're going to do the same thing. Again, make sure this is clamped nice and firm so it doesn't move on you. Your biscuit joiner, you can just move over to this side. And now we can line that up. Straight in, back out, and we're just going to cut those slots on all of our boards here. So your little small ones also we need to cut the same biscuit slots on the ends. Make sure you clamp it down nice and tight to the bench top. Lining up our biscuit joining with that little line. Now make sure you don't push forward before you pull the trigger. You got to pull the trigger first and then press forward. Goes fairly quick. Again, as you do it, keep it straight and lined up. Don't let that biscuit joiner tip forward or twist on you while you're doing these cuts. Clamping it down nice and tight. There we go, we've got our slots cut. Okay, for the legs, next it says get your four legs and mark an X on the two edges that are tapered. To figure out which edges that are tapered, you can place your leg down flat on the table and if it rocks, the edge touching the table is tapered. So as we cut these tapers on our leg, remember we only did two edges and we want to make that same biscuit slot cut but only on the side that's been tapered. So we're going to mark an X on those sides that have been tapered. You can look down at maybe and try to figure out which edge is tapered, but honestly the easiest way is to set it down on a bench and if it's rocking, it's tapered. So I'm pressing on here, it's not rocking. If I flip it, okay, that one is now rocking. So I know that the part touching the bench top is tapered. So I'm going to have that face that touched the bench top, and I'm just going to put an X on that face. Now you're going to have two edges tapered. So again, that one was tapered. If I rotate that, that one's also tapered. So the part touching the bench top, I'm going to make sure that part gets an X on it and both your X's will be next to each other. So that those two are tapered, and then the other two edges, those should have been flat the whole way through. So quickly just check all your boards on your legs. Rocking, so we know that that one that was touching the table is tapered. If I rotate that, okay, that face is also rocking, but just to double check, okay, the other faces do not rock. So that one's rocking. Touching the table is my tapered edge, marking with an X. So there are my two tapered edges here on that one. Just check that quickly on all your boards. That one rocks. Marking the side that's touching the bench. Does not rock, does not rock. That rocks. Marking those with an X. So quickly find the tapered edges because we're going to cut that same biscuit slot on your legs where the X's are at. So that's where the slots are going to be at on those ones. Now on the back side of your paper we're talking about we need to transfer some center lines from the long and short sides over to your legs and there's, again there's a picture there what kind of we're talking about. What I mean by that is where you marked your center line on your sides we need to transfer that over to your legs. And it also is important that your tapered side, the part that has an X on your legs, goes on the inside and again on the drawing it mentions this. So we want to make sure that that X is on the inside connecting to where that board will be. Now this board will be connected to the very center of your leg. So if you see this from this angle, it's going to be centered. When you transfer your line, it's okay if your board is not centered perfectly when we're transferring that. So I'm just going to take my leg, making sure that the X is one that's going to be where the biscuit slot is at. 
and I'm going to line these up so that the top edge of that board is fairly flush and I'm just going to transfer that line over to my leg where it meets. So about right there I'm just transferring that line over. Now I'm drawing that on the top part of my leg so my X is on the inside that's where it comes together and so those meet together. You'll do this on the other side as well with your other leg. Line up the top even and then just mark where that line lines up. So on your legs it has a little line now where we're going to be cutting some slots. Now you have two X's and so you need to understand that your longer boards are going to be connected on one side of your leg and then the other X that's where your shorter boards are going to be connected. And so we're going to also need to transfer the lines from the shorter boards as well over here which that'll be your other X. This is my shorter board now I'm just marking where that line hits. So this leg now has one line where it's going to be connected to my longer board and then the other side has the line where it's going to be connected to the shorter board on those. So go ahead and mark all of your lines where they're going to be at on your legs. Again, the X tapered part is going to be connected to your side pieces. Put our boards together, transfer our center line. So I've already done that one. So last one here. Again, I'm looking on my X's of my leg. The X is going to go on the inside. Lining that up with the top edge, transferring my center line across. The other X is there. That needs to be on the other side, transferring my line across. So as long as all your legs have the two X's on them, and you should have two little center lines transferred over on every leg. Okay, when we go to cut the biscuit slots in our legs, there's a couple things we need to make sure of. When we did it on our sides, we just clamped our board down to the bench top here, and it cut that slot perfectly centered right into the board there. Well, your leg is a little bit thicker, and so you can't just have the biscuit joiner cut right into your leg, otherwise that slot's not going to be centered on our leg. And so I've got some of these little quarter inch leg spacer boards that I made. So you're going to want to have your biscuit joiner sit on top of one of these. You're still going to clamp your leg down. So on your paper it says clamp your leg down tight near the thickest part of your board. So you've got a thick part here and then it tapers smaller down towards the bottom. So when we clamp this down, we want to clamp it near the thick part. And it also says have the transferred center line showing. And so we want to have that little line that we drew face up. So I'm just going to clamp this board down to my bench top and I want to be able to see my line. So if I clamp my clamp way over here on the smaller part, my leg doesn't sit tight over here. I want to make sure my leg is clamped near that thick part, but I still want to see my center line so I'm not having my clamp cover it up. So I'm just going to clamp that leg down so it doesn't move on me. And that's nice and firm. Then we're going to take our little quarter inch leg spacer and set it next to our board. And that way when we use our biscuit joiner, it's going to sit on top of that spacer board. And I can just line up my center line of my biscuit joiner with my little center line that I drew on my leg. Again, hold it nice and firm, pull that trigger first. Go all the way until it stops and it'll pop out. And that way when it cut that center line on our leg, you can see now it's more centered instead of lower on that. We want to do this on every X part because it cut the slot out where my X was at. So this one needs a slot here. We're going to line it up with that center mark that we did. So all your legs, again, you're going to clamp your leg down nice and firm on the thick part. Use your little spacer board and then you're going to line up your biscuit joiner with your center line that you drew and then cut in so you're going to get, every leg's going to have two slots cut into it and they're going to be right where those X's were at on your board. So we'll go ahead and do that. I'm going to clamp it near the thick part and I still want to see my line. I don't want to cover up my line but I want to make sure my board is clamped nice and firm so it doesn't move on me. Spacer board next to my board. Biscuit joiner on top of the spacer board. Now I have had some students 
put their spacer board down and then they clamp their leg on top of the spacer board. Well, that defeats the whole purpose of having the spacer board. So we want to make sure that we clamp your leg down to the bench and then your spacer board next to your leg after that. So this one's done. We've got both biscuits cut on that leg and we want to go ahead and do that to all the rest of our legs. That one's over on this side, so I'm going to flip my leg around so that's easier to, to reach. Okay, when you're done cutting all your slots, so you've cut all your slots in your sides and also your legs, bring your boards over to me with your paper and I'll sign you off.